Anybody want to share what the conclusion is? She stuck with the whiteboard, right? Y'all don't like to talk. All right. How about the, the degree is equal to the maximum number of x-intercepts? It's equal to the maximum number of x-intercepts. Now, I emphasize the fact that it's max because you don't always have that many. Case in point, the quadratics that we were just working on. It's degree 2, but we know that not all quadratics cross the x-axis twice. A lot of them do, but a lot of them, like number 1, also just touch it, and just as many never touch it. So that's your maximum number of x-intercepts. Um, same thing with the cubic. Number four. Number four has three x-intercepts. Number three only has one. It is possible to have two as well. You could have you can have one that crosses and you can have one that just touches. Now it's impossible though for a cubic function not to cross the x-axis, which should make sense because if the ends are going in opposite directions, one's going down, one's going up. You got to hit the middle somewhere along the way, right? Um, same thing with your quartic functions, 5 and 6. 6 has 4 x-intercepts. 5 only has 2. You can have any number um, from 0 all the way up to 4. 7 and 8, we call those 5th degree. We don't have a special name for them. Um, I guess technically we could call them quintic, but we don't. Um, I don't have an example on there with 5x-intercepts, but it is possible to have 5x-intercepts with a 5th degree polynomial. Uh, I got one on there with 3, one with 1. Again, it's impossible for that to not cross the x-axis, but you can get anything from 1 to 5. Now, um, let me talk about something really quickly. I've mentioned this before, but you've got to know that x-intercepts can also be called solutions, roots, and zeros. Those are words that are interchangeable for x-intercepts, um, but there's a little kind of condition. The total number of solutions is equal to the degree. The number of solutions is equal to the degree. We can have imaginary solutions. So, for example, Let's say number 3 only has one x-intercept. That means it has two imaginary solutions. Okay, um, so uh, let me see how I should write that. Um, I'll just write imaginary. When it doesn't cross. the expected number of times. There we go. So what I mean by that is if I have a fifth degree polynomial, I'm expecting five intercepts. So when I graph it, if I don't have five x-intercepts, then that means I've got some imaginary solutions. And imaginary solutions always come in pairs. Okay? Um, always come in pairs. You're always going to have an even number of imaginary solutions. Now, we are going to delve into this a little bit more in, in a couple of days, um, but I just want to go ahead and put that thought in your head that the degree is the number of expected x-intercepts. If we don't have that many x-intercepts, then that means you've got some imaginary solutions in there. Or you could have repeated solutions. By repeated solutions, I mean like number one, okay? When it just touches or bounces, uh, negative 4 is a repeated root. Negative 4, when you factor that, it's x plus 4 and x plus 4. So you get negative 4 as an answer twice. Um, so those technically can be pairs as well. All right? Okay. <clears throat> Equals the number of extrema. Now, depending on the even or oddness of your function will determine 
uh, if you have more maximums versus minimums, and um, also the way that it's facing will also determine that, whether it opens up or whether it opens down. That will determine whether you have more maximums or minimums or the same number. But it is always the degree minus 1 is your number of extrema, um, almost always. Now, you probably already knew that. Some of you I were, were talking about that very confidently. Now, this is kind of a new thing that we've got to talk about. We've got to talk about the intervals of increase versus decrease. So what I want you to do, I gave each group a box of colored pencils. You're going to kind of have to share a little bit. But for each of these functions, moving left to right, when your y values are decreasing, I want you to trace that with red. Okay, red is typically, you know, associated with negative um, decreasing kind of things. And then the intervals moving left to right, where the y values are increasing, Trace those with like green or blue. Increasing is kind of adding positive, that sort of thing. Um, really, you can use any colors you want to, but I just feel like those associate well with the increasing and decreasing. Okay? So like I said, share, you can kind of divvy them up in your group. Okay? Uh, that's fine as well. Um, but I want us to, we're, we're going to make some conclusions based on that. Very, very, very important concept. Now, this is another one of those... I'm thinking kind of forward thing. I don't know that you're necessarily going to be asked this on the final exam. But a lot of you are headed towards calculus. And this is a very important concept in calculus. AP or in college, wherever it's at, this is a very important concept in calculus. To create a maximum every single time you zone in on the extrema, when it goes from increasing to decreasing, okay, the function changes changes from increasing to decreasing. And most groups got that, okay. Now, when I say the function, I'm talking about the y values, okay. I'm talking about the y values when I say function. I'm just trying to use the terminology, the correct, proper terminology that you should be using when you describe this. Okay? The function, avoid terms like it, be specific. Okay? You're talking about the function, or you can say the y values change from increasing to decreasing. A minimum occurs when the function or the y values change is from decreasing to increasing. And again, we're always moving left to right. Okay, Always moving left to right when we're trying to describe this behavior. Okay, Now, this is what most people get that part. But this is what trips them up. They always forget this. Because we're talking about y values. We're describing what the y values are doing. But when we identify where it's actually happening, we're going to use the x values. Okay, we're going to use the x values. So let me show you what I mean. Let me draw the example that I have up here on the board really quickly and just kind of arbitrarily label some values. So we're increasing here and here, and we're decreasing here. So let's say that... This is negative 2, positive 7. And we'll say this point is positive 3, negative 4. Okay? So those are the maximum and minimum values. So if I was describing where my function is increasing, okay, I use the x values to describe that. So from the very far left of my function, so I start at negative infinity until I get to my maximum. But I use the x value, okay? Negative 2, okay? So from here to here, I'm increasing. Um, and then I'm increasing again on this end, okay? From positive 3 
to positive infinity. I use my x values to indicate where this is happening. And I'm decreasing in between there from negative 2 to positive 3, my function is decreasing. So you can draw all of these graphs. Okay? Whatever's going to help you, if drawing some vertical lines in there helps you distinguish, okay, this is where my change happens, this is where this change happens. So left to right, here's what I'm talking about. From the far left, negative infinity to negative 2, I'm increasing. Between negative 2 and positive 3, I'm decreasing. My y values are decreasing. And I'm using my x values to describe where it is occurring. Okay. And then from positive 3 to infinity, my y values are increasing in length. But the where is from 3 to infinity. x values describe where, y values describe what. Okay? This is what most people forget. They want to use those y values. Because we're talking about what the y values are doing, but the x values indicate where. Okay? Quickly, domain of all polynomial functions. Any polynomial function, the domain is all real numbers. Okay? The domain of any polynomial function is all real numbers. Again, domain, just to reiterate, is describing your x values. There are no problems with any x values for these functions. We can plug anything into these equations and we're going to get an answer out. So that means that any x value is included in the domain. It is all real numbers. If it's a polynomial function, automatically all real numbers. Now, I do want you to write this down on every single problem because I want you to get it stuck in your head so that you don't have to think about it. In the future, at the end of the semester, when I ask you what's the domain of x to the fourth minus 3, you don't even think about it. It's all real numbers because you know that's a polynomial function. Okay? Now, range, we've got two cases. If you look at, at these functions on this paper, when we're talking about the y values, some of these functions hit every single possible y value. Some of them do not. They have absolute maximums and absolute minimums. Those are the even functions. They have an absolute max or they have an absolute min, meaning they don't go any further below a certain point or they don't go any further above a certain point. Um, so I'm just going to say that it has a restricted range. We'll look at a specific example here in a second. But let's just say that it has a restricted range right now for an even function. Odd functions, the range is all real numbers because one end goes down, one end goes up, you hit every single y value in between. So the range of an odd polynomial, an odd degree polynomial, is all real numbers, just like it's been there. And the only other characteristic we haven't talked about so far is the y-intercept. So just in general, let's talk about the y-intercept of any function. That's when x equals 0. So you can always just plug in 0 for x, see what the answer is, or for a polynomial, it's always the constant on the end, okay? So it's 0 comma c. Now, technically, you may have more than three terms, obviously, with these higher degree polynomials. But c here is just representing that constant number on the end. If there's not a constant on the end, it's 0, okay? It's 0. 